spring break, but Hawkeye Sports Report needs no break during the madness of March. Coming up, the madness comes to Carver Hawkeye Arena as the Iowa women's basketball team hosts the NCAA tournament. The Iowa men's basketball team is set to host a home game in the NIT tournament, and the wrestlers have quite an opportunity in their backyard as they head down Interstate 80 to Des Moines for the national championship. That and much more on the Hawkeye Sports Report. Welcome inside another edition of the Hawkeye Sports Report. Nick Dorman standing alongside associate head coach Jan Jensen of the women's basketball team. Uh, coach, you learned your fate Monday night. You didn't know uh, who you were going to be playing. You knew where you were going to be playing. Um, first of all, though, six straight NCAA tournaments. Uh, that's a number that's very important and uh, a lot of pride that's taken there with you coaches. You know, absolutely. You know, it's, it's a, it is tough, you know, day in and day out to, you know, reach the expectations that you set for your program. And then when you look back and you're able to do that six consecutive years and, um, you know, we've had a good, you know, really a pretty good run postseason play every year we've been at Iowa mm -hmm. in the, the 13 seasons we, we've been here. But I, thought, I think one of my favorite moments of last night was um, after our name popped up and the excitement and then uh, before Lisa released all the players to go out and, you know, talk to the media, um, she kind of made it a little more intimate and brought everybody together and, and uh, really, you know, really told them how proud she was of them. Yep. And then um, she really highlighted the seniors and thanked them for everything they've done. Um, because every year they've been here, they've made it to the NCAA tournament. And that's what you want to do is when you ha want to have senior classes upon senior classes that are going to be able to, you know, to say the, the same thing. And it was, I don't know, it was just one of those moments in, in, in my career when I look back on it, kind of gave me that, that lump in my throat. and. Uh, just really, really felt a lot of pride about it. And so that, that, that sixth consecutive is, is very big, Nick. Four straight for the senior class, like you said, that's not something that's easy to do. The fact that they get to do it at home, though. Yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, go out at home, maybe mm -hmm. advance to the Sweet 16 at home, who knows what's going to happen, yeah. but how important is it to yeah. be at home? You know, I think, um, you know, it, it, that's the, the pro and the con of the women's game. If, you know, I think every team that hosts would tell you it's great but if we could do away with it and be able to have the attendance at totally neutral sites as the men do it, that would be the, the best and the most fair way. Um, but since it's not like that, when you have an administration like ours uh, that is willing to put the bid up uh, to be able to host a national tournament, we feel really blessed with, with that. And um, when you're a player, you know, they don't know all that goes in to you know, the bidding process, but then the organizational process. and all the extra work that our facilities people have to do, our ticket office people have to do. I mean, everybody, the janitorial staffs, I mean, everybody is gonna have to step up the game. Right. And um, for our seniors to be able to have that opportunity, and they've been special seniors, Jamie Prinney, Trisha Nesbitt, Morgan Johnson, um, to have the opportunity to play for a national championship and it goes through your home, home court, yep. um, I think that is pretty, pretty special. And obviously we know it's a tough opponent, uh, Miami, um, you know, real similar records, but playing the very athletic, rugged conference. Uh, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to, you know, play well to, to get them. And then obviously, uh, more than likely, Notre Dame, the num number one seed, will, will be waiting. But, you know, someone has to take him down. So if we get that opportunity, but I was telling my five-year-old son today, he was talking about Miami and Notre Dame. I said, it's all about Miami. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Just one game at a time. Right. Uh, you do know who you're going to play now. Uh, you have a few days here to wrap up the week before you play on Sunday at 6.30. What do you want to get accomplished here at the end of the week? You know, I think uh, today what's important, we gave our players uh, the weekend off. Uh, just when you have that long of a break, it's, um, it's kind of hard to just practice and you don't really know who you're going to face and what you're going to be doing. And it, it's a nice opportunity to kind of heal a little, you know, nicks and banged up, yep. you know, elbows here, you know, ankle here or there. So. We've been, the last week, doing things that we're going to focus on us, and we'll continue doing that today. We did watch a, a film last night on Miami. Um, we know a little bit of what they do, but Coach Fitz is right now down in the film room working extremely hard, and she'll get to know them more and more. But today's a little bit more focus on us. We'll add a little bit of some drills that are going to mimic what Miami will do, and tomorrow it will all begin to be focused on Miami. All right, Coach, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. Uh, Iowa-Miami, 6.30 uh, on Sunday. Tickets are on sale, so uh, I know we're hoping to see yeah. a lot of Iowa fans. We would there. love to have as many of you come as possible. It's not often that you get to have a NCAA 
opportunity right here in our home gym and we thank all the people who bought them early and those of you that have waited to buy them and tell your friends because we'd sure love to have a great, great home, home crowd. Absolutely. Coach, thanks again for stopping by. We'll see you on Sunday. All right. Thank you. Go Hawks. We're back with much more right after the play of the week and a quick break. This week's play of the week comes from University of Iowa diver Addison Voschel. This is file video, but Wednesday at the NCAA Zone D Diving Championships in Houston, the freshman collected 595.6 points on the men's platform dive to set a career and school record. Addison Boschel's series of platform dives are this week's Hawkeye Sports Report Play of the Week. The road to the NCAA Women's Final Four begins in Iowa City, and you can be a part of the action, cheering for every dazzling dish. Nice no look underneath. And watching the big shots fall. Nothing but net. Experience it live at the first and second rounds of the 2013 NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship. When you're hot, you're hot. March 24th and 26th at Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City, Iowa. Adult all-session tickets start at $25. Visit NCAA.com slash tickets to make a date with champions. Welcome back to the spring break edition of the Hawkeye Sports Report. The Iowa men's basketball team is set to host a tough Indiana State team at Carver Hawkeye Arena Wednesday in the first round of the NIT tournament. Although disappointed about not making the big dance this year, the Hawkeyes know this is a quality tournament and the chance to keep playing more basketball. This is a tremendous opportunity, phenomenal field. You watch those names come up and you think you're watching the NCAA bracket. Just goes to show you how many quality teams there are, how many great college basketball players there are. Phenomenal coaches in this tournament, and we're thrilled to have a home game. Postseason play, there's a lot of teams that, that want to be playing right now that aren't. We're, uh, you know, we've worked all season long, and um, it's a great opportunity. There's a, I mean, you saw it, there's a great field, so it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's some good teams in this game too. Being able to continue playing, um, that's always an a honor and a blessing. Um, just looking forward to it, really, um, making sure we stay focused and and uh, take care of business. I just hope that our fans come through for us like they did last year. We sold 13,800 tickets in 12 hours. Hopefully we'll do the same thing. We need our fans, our students are away on break. Some I'm sure will still come, but we really need our fans to show up and make this a phenomenal atmosphere. Also a big week for the top five Iowa wrestling team. Iowa is disappointed with its third place showing at the Big Ten tournament, and now a chance to show what it can do on the national scene, right here in the state of Iowa. I ain't going, and yeah, you know that's improvement over a year ago. You don't like going with less than ten, but nine's better than eight, and you feel like you're just giving that those points away at 149. And you know it's been kind of a recurring theme at that weight class, and we need to iron that out for the future. But that's discussion for another time. We got nine going, and um, the the path has been laid in front of them at each weight. The brackets are out. The seeds are out, and one match at a time, and do what you do best. It's just that time of year. It's, it's the time to uh, rise to the occasion. It's the time to be a Saturday nighter, to, uh, to go into that tournament without any bars held back. It's my first chance, and it's probably my last chance, so it's, it's now or never for me. Walked out of that arena with, uh, without what I wanted. All that work I, I did last year, you know, I didn't get to reap the rewards of it, so it's kind of a rotten feeling. You know, we got work to do, but we got work to do to get there, too. And uh, I think Matt knows that, and um, I think he's on the right track, no doubt. You have to ask him, and I think he'll articulate it very well that he's on the right track. I have a loss to, to the to the two seed and the one seed, and I know that I'm more than capable of, of turning both of those matches in a different direction. I think it's a matter of doing what you do to get the last peak or edge out of you right now, and that's where we're at. We're at a peak. This is the most exciting part point of the year. You know everything else that you talk about, you kind of um, you allude to this point in the year, and um, sometimes you you know intentionally stay away from it, but you're always geared toward this. Next on the Hawkeye Sports Report, softball and much more. But first, this week's Player of the Week. This week's Player of the Week is Iowa senior pitcher Matt Dermody. Sunday versus Nebraska-Omaha in Wichita, Dermody improved to 4-0 on the season in Iowa's 4-1 win over the Mavericks. Dermody fired pitches for seven and a third innings, allowing one earned run, five hits, 
while recording eight strikeouts and just one walk. Matt Dermody, this week's Hawkeye Sports Report Player of the Week. Iowa transitioning, and look at this! Jam shot, Eric May. The Red Sea parted. Hey, Hawk fans. Um, it's Eric May, senior forward. Um, we're playing the IT this, this week, 6 o'clock on Wednesday, so come out. We need your support. Um, you know, make it make it the great atmosphere it's been all year. Go Hawks. Marble for three from the wing. Good. Curled it in, boy. Well-timed baskets. What's up, Hawk fans? We play here at Carver at 6 o'clock against Indiana State Wednesday night. Um, we would be more than happy to have you guys come and join us in uh, Rock Carver. You're watching the Hawkeye Sports Report, and so far we focused on the winter sports, but the spring sports are in full swing as well. The Iowa softball team has been in Kentucky taking on nationally ranked teams this week, which included a 6-2 win at number 11 Louisville on Monday. The win at Louisville was the Cardinals' first regular season loss at home since 2011. Definitely not an easy place to play, let alone win. Iowa's win over the Cardinals was Iowa's fourth win over a top 25 opponent this season. They are scheduled to return home to start Big Ten play at home this weekend in Iowa City Friday with the weekend series against Minnesota. One of the top Hawks in 2013 swinging the bat and causing swings and misses is junior Kayla Massey. I think of hitting and pitching completely different. My pitching I focus very hard on and I have a set plan, everything. For batting I think of it, I'm kind of like still excited to bat. So it's kind of, it's just extra for me. You know, it's kind of nice. Uh, a lot of times you have pitchers that just are strictly pitchers, and it's nice for them to focus on one thing, but they actually have a, an interesting view of, of the ball. So when they're in the box, they're thinking as a pitcher sometimes, and they see the spin, they know where the ball's moving. This year we have an additional pitcher in Michaela Whitney, and with the three of them, and Kayla right now is one of her hottest bats. We're not going to take that out of the lineup until, you know, she maybe cools down or I don't think that's going to happen. But if she did, uh, then we would, you know, maybe reassess. But uh, we still, you know, stand that chance when she has to run for herself of possible injuries. So she's got to be smarter on the bases as a coach. I've got to be smarter on what I'm trying to do offensively. Um, but, you know, as, as I saw her play, I knew she has the ability to do that because she did it with her club team. The challenge now is that extra piece of only getting pinch run for once. And now you've got to run the bases on your own and, and make sure that we, we stay injury free. Well, I hope to see it all year round. Um, I think just kind of going up there one pitch at a time and selecting which one to swing at and not. I don't try to get too complicated with batting. She's very focused. Uh, she's very driven and she's going to make sure her job is done and done well. She takes a lot of pride in that and she puts in a lot of time. Uh, she's one of those pitchers that you say, okay, let's, we're just going to go light today and, well, can I keep throwing it? Can I keep, can I, you know what, yeah, if that's what's going to make you feel really good and ready to go, let's do it. I get pretty focused on one thing and pretty determined. I'm not a very, I don't look like a very happy person when I pitch, but I'm very focused on my job at hand. Uh, her strengths are uh, grit and determination and challenging that hitter to say, I dare you to hit my ball and I'm going to keep daring you and I'll throw my best even if that's your best location to hit and I challenge you. Uh, that, that's the fun part. She, she doesn't like to back down. Uh, she's going to go right at and she's going to beat you with her best. I love the community. I love the support. There's not a lot of um, support with sports necessarily in California. They're not as big. I love the school. Um, I loved everything about it. I first saw snow on my official visit with Chelsea Line in the dorm room and it first started snowing and I had no idea what it was. I was just like, is that hail? Really? And she was probably more excited than I was and asked if I wanted to go play in it and I said no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay with the cold? Yeah, I mean, it was shocking at first, but I mean, I don't think you ever really get used to it. I think you just tolerate it better. Men's and women's tennis, women's golf, men's and women's gymnastics have all been in action. Check out HawkeyeSports.com for complete results. A look ahead at a hectic Hawkeye week next as we wrap up the Hawkeye Sports Report.
Here we go with this week's slate of events. It's this week on Iowa, and it is very, very packed. Mentioned previously at Carver Hawkeye Arena, the Iowa women's basketball team takes on Miami Sunday at 6.30 in a first round NCAA tournament action. A win puts the Hawkeyes up against number one seed Notre Dame or Tennessee Martin Tuesday, also in Iowa City. Men's basketball team hosts Indiana State Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the NIT tournament. That game can be seen on ESPN2. A win puts the Hawkeyes in a matchup with UMass or Stony Brook later this week. NCAA Wrestling Championships begin Thursday at 11 a.m., two sessions each day through Saturday. Check online listings as ESPN's coverage is on a variety of platforms, including ESPN3, ESPNU, and the finals will be televised on ESPN. HawkeyeSports.com will also have exclusive and extensive online coverage. Elsewhere, rowing opens its spring season at the Longhorn Invite in Austin, Texas, Friday and Saturday. Women's tennis continues its California trip Thursday at Cal State Northridge. Men's tennis has a Friday afternoon match at Fresno State. Baseball is scheduled to open a Big Ten play at Northwestern Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The Hawkeyes also host Creighton Wednesday, March 27th. Softball is slated to host Minnesota as the Big Ten season gets underway at Pearl Field. Friday's game is scheduled for 4 p.m. with 2 p.m. contests coming on Saturday and Sunday. The track and field teams start their outdoor season at the Alabama Invite all weekend long in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And finally, the men's golf team returns to the course in Scottsdale, Arizona for spring break action. As always, be sure to check out HawkeyeSports.com for updated schedule information with all the weather that may be on its way, news and video highlights. Have a great weekend.